Welcome to Thurman Action at Gulfstream Park. I'm Katie Stazak. It's Friday and we have nine races on the card today. Another beautiful day here at Gulfstream Park and we have a pretty beautiful Rainbow Six carryover. It continues to grow and should reach more than 600, sure to be almost $700,000 today. Good luck to you in that wager that starts in race number four. Let's get right to the track and weather conditions for today's card. The main track is fast and the turf course is firm. Friday's first race is a starter allowance. Four-year-olds in a horde will be going a mile on the turf course. Scratch both of your main track only participants in here. Those would be the eight and the nine. Also, one jockey change, Eddie Castro, will be aboard the two Lighthouse Sound. Racing at Gulfstream. Last in, first out, Lasso quickly up now to establish the lead. From the inside now, second is Oak Bluffs. Tap and trade. He comes away in the top flight. In fact, he'll land second in the run of the first turn. The speed of the speed is Lasso. He's crossed over to the inside, and he leads it now by two. Tap and trade is second. Oak Bluffs is third. Then it's concert stage, a stretch of two lengths back to Lighthouse Sound. He's to the inside of Dynamic Boy, and Purely Boy is last of all, and about nine or ten lengths off the speed after the opening quarter went in 23 and four. Six to five the price and Lasso the boss. He's into the backstretch by a length and a half in front of Tap and Trade second, Oak Bluffs third. Racing in fourth now is concert stage in front of a closer Lighthouse Sound fifth. Then to the outside, Dynamic Boy is sixth and still detached a long way. Purely Boy last of all for jockey Edgar Prado and about 12 lengths now off the speed with less than half a mile to go. They went through the opening half mile in 47 seconds flat and Lasso is having everything his own way up front. He leads to the far turn by a length and a half. Tap and Trade is second. Oak Bluffs down to the inside third concert stage is now fourth and it's the veteran lighthouse sound fifth from the outside dynamic boy needs to get a room move on and so too does purely boy he's been last the whole way and they run to the top of the stretch lasso comes to the top of the stretch after three quarters and 110 flat and he has the lead toward the inside and now second is oak bluffs from tap and trade in concert stage three sixteenths to go lasso two length lead getting to the outside for clear a sheer clear shot is oak bluffs then it's concert stage and lighthouse sound lasso driven to the lead but he's almost home it's lasso in front, Oak Bluffs can't reach him. Lasso, gate to wire. Oak Bluffs second from concert stage third, then Lighthouse Sound at 133 and 3. Lasso takes them wire to wire in the opener. Edgar Zayas was in the irons for trainer George Navarro and owners White Wabbit Wasting LLC. Lasso paid $4.40 to win. That'll bring us right to the second race. This one is a $6,250 claiming event. Three-year-olds and upward, which have not won two races, will be sprinting six furlongs on the main track. Scratch the three, the Sun Drop Kid. And they're up. It was a level beginning. Toward the inside, he did it his way, commences the best and goes looking for the lead. Here's Massive moving to challenge and from between horses and now third, Chevron Light. Then it's a gap of two to tease two step, followed outside by Cum Laude and come on, Charlie is last of the six as they race down the back stretch. Three headed pace duel on the front end with he did it his way with inside position and a narrow lead. Chevron Light is there, second perch three wide, Massive is third. Tease two step behind him while fourth after a 23 second opening quarter time. Then it's a stretch of four to come on, Charlie and Cum Laude is now last as they run around the far turn. They're at the 5 16ths and Massive is the leader in front to half a length toward the inside. Tease two step trying to sneak through an opening alongside he did it his way. Also right there is Chevron Light then come on Charlie and Cum Laude but Massive is slowly getting away. They pass the quarter pole with Massive the one to catch. He's opening on a five length lead. He did it his way under full pressure with Tease two step cutting the corner now. Tease two step has room to quicken and they're into the stretch. Massive the lead is down to two lengths now toward the inside Tease two step toward the outside Outside, he did it his way. Come on, Charlie, trying to rally from the back. In deep stretch, Massive is a bit erratic, but he's in front, and he's in front to stay. Odds on favorite, Massive, home first. Tease two steps second, he did it his way third, then come on, Charlie, and one twelve and three. Massive draws off to take the second race with Josie Gomez aboard. Rohan Creighton was the winning trainer for owners Joker Racing, LLC. Massive paid $3.80 to win. And we'll be right back with more racing after these messages. Do not go anywhere. Gulfstream Park is one of Florida's top entertainment destinations, mixing restaurants, clubs, a casino, and international boutique shops with world-class racing. In a lavish, sun-drenched setting with the feel of a Mediterranean village, Gulfstream is a leading year-round entertainment and tourist destination and the home of luxury residences in 2014. The Stronach family, owners of Gulfstream Park, 
is committed to the sport of thoroughbred racing and the grace, spirit, and generosity of the horse. Point of entry would not be denied. And they're into the stretch. Point of entry taking the lead. Point of entry, a two-length lead. It's point of entry taking the lead. Point of entry will go to the Breeders' Cup on a five-race winning streak. Five-time grade one winner from a deep Phipps family with a pedigree and physical to become the heir of Dinah Former. Point of entry. Standing at Adina Springs. Welcome back, here's the third race. This is a $25,000 claimer. Three-year-olds and upward, which have not won two races, will be going a mile on the main track. Scratch the five, here's to Mike. And uh, they're up. Toward the inside, Niche begins the best. From the outside, Maximus Decimus is in fact hustled out to try to get the lead. Mongolian Chrome is away in the top flight. These three are quickest. Behind the speed and moving up to the outside is Songa. Then down to the inside, JC Mamba and Abiseb Brothers improves in front of him. They run out of the one-mile shoot, and Maximus Decimus was intent on the lead, and he leaves the shoot on top by a length. Niche keeps his spot toward the inside second, and Abiseb Brothers has split horses to be third. Mongolian Chrome and Songa are next, and J.C. Mamba last of all after the opening quarter went in a spirited 23 and two. Here's Niche taking it to Maximus Decimus, and Niche and Edgar Prado onto the front now, three parts of a length, now opened it up to two and a half. Racing second, Maximus Decimus, a stretch of five to Abiseb Brothers, really stringing out here. Abiseb Brothers is four lengths in front of the fourth horse, Mongolian Chrome, was better than 15 behind, and the other two are not even in shouting distance right now, as Niche is opening up. Niche and Prado have opened up a 12-length lead now. Abiseb Brothers at the 5-16th, trying to get after him second. They went a half mile in 45-1. and one. Maximus Decimus has called it an afternoon, and now trying to get running from the back is J.C. Mamba, and they're into the stretch with Niche all alone. Niche enters the stretch in a position where he possibly cannot lose. He's in front by 15. Abiseb Brothers is second. He's 15 in front of J.C. Mamba. And they're in deep stretch, and this is all Nish. Nish carves a big Nish. He wins easy. Double-digit win, and he was never asked for his best. Abbasev Brothers clearly second best from J.C. Mamba third, and Songa fourth. Nish coasts on the front end to take the third race. Edgar Prada was aboard for trainer Larry Pilati and owners Monarch Stables, Inc. Nish returned $5.20 for the win. Let's get to the fourth race now. This is a $12,500 maiden claimer. Phillies and Mare's three-year-olds and upward will be going a mile on the main track. No scratches or jockey changes to report. And they're up. From the center, true to the game, gets the first call and goes looking for the lead toward the outside. Starship Lisa has chirped along to show speed. And from the inside, Forever Lily is moving to challenge and spiritual leaders on the inside. They run out of the one mile shoot and the leader now is on top. It's Forever Lily, three parts of a length off the fence. And now second is our Jackie Wacky. Number four, tried to make the gap there. Forever Lily is out of the race. And the leader now is our Jackie Wacky from true to the game second. Spiritual leader is now third. Moving up on the outside, that's Gallant Lady from fourth. Starship Lisa, the favorite, is fifth. Length in front of the way Bell is, who's now sixth. Then to the outside, Valid Wildfire. And it's a stretch of another two lengths to the trailer, Ella Run, as they run down the backstretch. Chucky John Cruz is up on his feet. They kick to the far turn, and the leader is still true to the game in front to half a length. 
Up on the outside, Gallant Lady second, Starship Lisa is now third. That's all for Spiritual Leader and all Jackie Wacky. The way Bell is runs on from the back. They run to the top of the stretch. True to the game, starting to get away at the 5 sixteenths is open to two length lead. Gallant Lady is all in second. Starship Lisa comes under a scrub third. She is gaining, but not authoritatively after a half mile and 47 and one. They went three quarters in 112 and two, and they have True to the Game to catch. True to the Game now asked to quicken up. Starship Lisa to the attack on the outside. Continue to grind up on the outside to be second. Gallant Lady is third. Then it's the way Bell is and Ella run from last. In deep stretch, true to the game. Still in front by two. Starship Lisa shifting ground. True to the game digging. True to the game hanging on. Starship Lisa was second in front of Gallant Lady third. Then Ella run fourth in 139 and four. True to the game cannot be caught in the fourth race. She takes this one with Eddie Castro aboard. George Navarro gets his second win of the day, the winning owners, AMG Equine LLC. True to the game, paid $7.40 to win. The fifth race is a $35,000 claimer. Three-year-old fillies will be sprinting five furlongs on the turf course. And they're up. Last in, first out, Gato Dorado gets the first call, quickly tackled by Awesome and Densum, who moves to challenge. And in between horses, Emerald Citadel comes away in good shape. In fact, Emerald Citadel is ahead in front and taking it to Awesome and Densum. They've three lengths in front now of on the outside, goodbye Sorrel third. After the sharp beginning, racing fourth is Gato Dorado. In between horses is one for the money, hun. Down to the inside, Summer's back. From the three wide side is Sikar, a length better than an inside running Shining America, and far back, Zamorata. They run around the far turn. Awesome and Ensom has won the battle. Can she win the war? She has the lead by a length with Goodbye Sorrow taking it to her on the outside second. These two have opened up five lengths on Summer's back third, and they're at the top of the stretch. Here's Goodbye Sorrow on the outside of a softened up Awesome and Ensom who tries to kick for more. It's four lengths back to the outside here. Shining America in with an upset possibility, and Goodbye Sorrow is still in front. Summer's back and Shining America gobbling up the ground. Shining America and Tyler Gaffleone to win it from second now. Uh, Summer's back in front of Goodbye Sorrel third, then one for the money, hun, in 56 and two. Shining America gets up to take the fifth race. Tyler Gaffleone was the winning jockey for trainer David Nunn, who also owns a portion of this filly with Teresa Salerno. Shining America paid $50.20 to win. There's a new day dawning in Florida. Never before has a Breeders' Cup Classic winner retired to stud in the Sunshine State. Until now. Adina Springs presents three-time grade one winner and earner of over $4 million, Fort Larned. New to Adina Springs South. OBS April two-year-old sales grads have posted 86 stakes wins since January 1st, 2014, including Millionaire Peranda in the $2 million Singapore Cup. In the past 15 months, the OBS Spring Sale has produced 64 stakes winners and counting, better than a stakes winner a week, including grade one winners, Stephanie's Kitten and the Big Beast. Find your next stakes winner at the OBS April two-year-old sale. OBS, we measure success by performance. A love of horses and a commitment to excellence have come together in the heart of Florida's Marion County. Owned by lifelong horseman Benjamin Leon Jr., Basilu Stables has assembled top-notch thoroughbreds, breeding and racing the champions of today and tomorrow. Breeders' Cup winner Royal Delta has thrilled the racing world with back-to-back -back wins in the Ladies' Classic. As a multi-year sponsor of the Fountain of Youth and the Florida Derby, Basilu Stables is a proud sponsor of Gulfstream Park. Glad to have you back with us. Here's the sixth race. This is a maiden special weight. Florida bred three-year-olds will be going a mile and a 16th on the turf course. Just one note in here, shake things up. We'll race with blinkers on today. And they're up. Poor beginning for go around. It was a quick beginning toward the inside for Arch in the Park, who will establish the lead from the inside. Moonlit Friday comes away racing second alongside Tiger of Wales and Semblance of Order. These four are quickest. They're a length and a half better than Sanad. Then down toward the inside is Persuasive. Shake things up his second last and go around. We'll have to do that. He's last of all in the run to the first turn. 
with the lead. It's Arch in the Park, and Gabriel Saez by a length and a quarter after an opening quarter in 24-3. and three. Ratcheting up the pressure second is Moonlit Friday. From between horses, semblance of order, he was reined back hard to run back in third now. Two and a half in front of an inside running Tiger of Wales. Then on the outside and moving up Sanad to the inside. That's persuasive. And at the back, go around and shake things up. They move down the back stretch and still up top, the leader. Arch in the park, in front three parts of a length. Up on the outside, semblance of order, four wide and Tiger of Wales from between a Moonlit Friday. Moonlit Friday's had the best trip so far after a 48 and three half mile. Down to the inside, that's Persuasive, who comes under a bit of a scrub, move, moves up third now. Then it's to the outside and coming on from fifth now is uh, to the inside, shake things up. Meanwhile, Arch in the park is getting away. Arch in the park with the two length lead. Moonlit Friday got a crack on the shoulder to quicken. Semblance of order is four wide. Persuasive pipped off cover. He's 50. 50 to 1 and coming after the leaders. Shake things up and Castro will follow him and they're at the top of the stretch. With the lead now, it's still Arch in the Park. Persuasive to the outside and to the attack and he just took a short lead. Arch in the Park is back to second. Then to the outside semblance of order. Go around is coming up the inside. But a shocking upset in the mix here. It's 50 to 1. Persuasive who wins. Arch in the Park second. Go around third and fourth. Semblance of order in 141 and 4. Persuasive absolutely upsets the sixth race at 50 to 1. Luca Panici gets the win for trainer Joseph Hennessy and owners Arendelle. Persuasive paid $109 to win. Hope you had that one on your ticket. And after the race, winning jockey Luca Panici said stretching out in distance really seemed to suit his horse. Well, I have a perfect trip inside. I can save ground, I say, on the rail. I've opened a couple of rooms by myself and uh, it was a pretty decent uh, uh, trip and uh, the horse, uh, he kicked very good uh, and in, in the distance because I saw the the two replay, the, the last two races that have a seven and a half furlong look like he need a d more distance and uh, today was a perfect trip for him. The seventh race is a maiden special weight. Three-year-olds and upward will be sprinting five furlongs on the turf course. Scratch the five, where's my sock? And the six, Apple Orchard. And they're off. From the center, Malibu Charlie begins right on cue and goes looking for a clear early lead. Market guessing will try to deny him that opportunity. He races second. It's a stretch of three to Euro Exchange in Taverny Bay, two and a half in front of All Night Affair, then Little Chris A. Another two lengths back to the inside, Sharp Valor and Magnanimous Mag is last of all as they take it to the far turn. One to two and a clear lead for Malibu Charlie. Throttles open, five in front of Market guessing second. Euro Exchange is on the outside of Taverny Bay, then it's three lengths to All Night Affair. The opening quarter in 20 and 3, and Malibu Charlie in a tour de force at this point, seven on top. Taverny Bay cuts the corner inside of Market Guessing, then Euro Exchange All Night Affair, and all the rest. But Edgar Prado under a hand ride with the favorite Malibu Charlie. Malibu Charlie puts it all together in a big way. He never had an anxious moment. Malibu Charlie in a laugher. He wins by six. Taverny Bay second, Euro Exchange third, then All Night Affair, and Market Guessing. Malibu Charlie is much the best in the seventh race. He takes this one easily with Edgar Prado in the irons, who gets his second win of the day. The winning owner and trainer of Malibu Charlie is Brian Lynch. Malibu Charlie returned $3 for the victory.
Gulfstream Park is one of Florida's top entertainment destinations, mixing restaurants, clubs, a casino, and international boutique shops with world-class racing. In a lavish, sun-drenched setting with the feel of a Mediterranean village, Gulfstream is a leading year-round entertainment and tourist destination and the home of luxury residences in 2014. The Stronach family, owners of Gulfstream Park, is committed to the sport of thoroughbred racing and the grace, spirit, and generosity of the horse. The eighth race is a starter allowance. Phillies and mares, four-year-olds and upward, will be going a mile on the turf course. Scratch the five and the six. They're out the post. And they're up. Toward the inside, Pentathlon gets the first call from between horses. Now it's got a heart of gold moving to challenge, and Carlos Olivero puts got a heart of gold on the lead in the run to the first turn. Toward the outside, Miss Tappet is a joint second with Pentathlon riding the inside. Then it's Viper a fifth and about four behind to the inside, Lady Joyful, followed by Maydell, and the trailer is done one. They run around the first turn and loose up top. Got a heart of golds, open a four length lead now after a 23 and four opening quarter. Pentathlon taken in hand to be second. Miss Tappet is now third. Racing fourth is Viper. She's a length better than Maydell. Lady Joyful to the inside and the gray done one. Three wide at the back of the pack. Down the back stretch they continue now and still up top. Got a heart of gold trying to harness her speed to the half mile pole. She leads by a dwindling three lengths. Racing second is Pentathlon. Viper is pocketed up down inside, bracketed by Maydell, and up between horses, Miss Tappet. Don one is out of last as the field takes much closer order, and trailing the field is Lady Joyful. They went a half mile in 47 seconds flat, and taking over now, Pentathlon. Pentathlon leads. Maydell comes to call. Viper working off the fence around Miss Tappet. Don one has asked the question with no reply. Then to the outside and coming on Lady Joyful, but they're at the top of the stretch. On the inside, it's Pentathlon. Drifts wide off the corner. Good news for Viper. She snuck through inside, and Maydell is down the outside, and these three to settle the score with an eighth of a mile to go. Maydell roused on the outside and up for the lead now. Here's Dunn one with the second win, trying to get up into the exacta, but Maydell's a winner. It's Maydell to win by two. Going to be Pentathlon who held second from Dunn one third, then Viper a fourth in 135 and one. Maydell takes them home in the eighth race. She scores by two and a quarter lengths with Edgar Zayas in the irons. He gets his second win of the day for trainer Peter Walder and owners David R. Lengel and Aventura Stable. Maydell paid $6.20 to win. The Friday finale is a $25,000 mating claimer. Phillies and mares three-year-olds and upward will be going seven and a half furlongs on the turf course. Just one scratch in here, that would be the 13. And runners away. From the center, Kabuki Rose and Rose Graciela both break nicely. Moving up to the inside, it's Honey Eyed down to the rail, Starship Brooklyn. And from the outside, Love Flute in the lime colors, racing on in fifth now. As they bend into the first turn, they're chasing the speed of Kabuki Rose and Angel Serpa. They lead it now by a length and a half. Up to second is Tartaletta, then down to the inside, Starship Brooklyn third. Honey Eyed is now fourth. Then to the outside and Love Flute from fifth with Princess Jasmine in sixth. Violet Road is a joint seventh alongside Rose Graciela. Then it's a length back to sheer delight. To her outside is Caribbean Princess. It's another two lengths to the outside, Samaritana, and trailing the field, Starship Expresso. Down the back stretch after the opening quarter covered in 24 and one, and Kabuki Rose has the lead by two. Racing to the inside, Starship Brooklyn and a Matu path and a joint second now is Tartaletta. It's another two to Honey Eyed to the outside and Love Flute. Then to the inside, Princess Jasmine, followed by Violet Road. Violet Road will have to go from there. She's to the inside of Rose Graciela, then comes Caribbean Princess and Sheer Delight, and they run to the top of the stretch. Kabuki Rose goes to the top of the stretch on top after a 47 and two half mile to the outside and Honey Eyed coming on second. Toward the inside, Starship Brooklyn is now third to the attack far outside Rose Graciela. Graciela, widest of all, Violet Road is rolling, but she's running out of time. They're all running out of time to catch Kabuki Rose. She's still in front. Kabuki Rose, three lengths to the good. Violet Rose up into second. Kabuki Rose in front. Violet Road second, third, Rose Graciela. It's close for the minors involving Honey Eyed and Caribbean Princess. I believe with Starship Expresso is a clear fifth and 129 and two. Kabuki Rose takes the Friday finale. Angel Serpa was the winning jockey for trainer Robert Donato and owners Two Tone Farms. Kabuki Rose paid $11.40 to win.
And speaking of payoffs, let's get to our exotic wagers. There were some big numbers today. The pick four, 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 one thousand seven hundred fifty-six dollars and thirty-five cents. The pick five, four of five, one hundred nine dollars and forty-five cents. Five of five, twenty-three thousand two hundred fifty-three dollars and eighty cents. There was one single alive in the final leg of the Rainbow Six, but there was no single winning ticket today. Six of six paid $39,566.86. The carryover lives on into Saturday. It stands at $735,082.12. That's going to do it for Friday. Tomorrow is Saturday, and we have 10 races on the card. There's a nice maiden special weight scheduled for the seventh race. A competitive group of 12 three-year-olds will go a mile and a 16th on the grass. Trainer Chad Brown has two colts in this race, but the edge has to go to Extensible. The son of Malibu Moon tried turf for the first time in his last start and rallied strongly to be third, beaten just a half length, and that came after he completely missed the break and spotted the field several lengths at the start. That was his first race in over a year. I expect him to move forward in his second start off the layoff, and I also think the stretch out from seven and a half furlongs will help him. How you could also move forward because he'll be making his first start for new connections tomorrow. Trainer Joe Orsino will saddle this colt after he made two promising starts on the grass earlier this winter. He finished a rallying third in his career debut. Then he got caught seven wide in his second start and made a late run to be fourth on January 23rd. I think you have to respect this son of looking at Lucky in this spot. That's how the seventh is shaping up. I'll see you back here tomorrow for the entirety of our 10 race card. Thanks for watching Thurbert Action at Gulfstream Park. I'm Katie Stasak.